So again, thank you and uh, welcome to the School Committee Town of Foxboro regular meeting December 21st. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, tonight we're going to take up, uh, recognize any visitors who want to be heard, take up uh, a few minutes. Uh, I think it's one, minute, one meeting's worth of minutes. We have a teaching and learning highlight featuring Ms. Lies, a Hearn eighth grade students, and a flipped learning environment, which I'm excited to hear about. We're going to um, re-announce the 2015 Massachusetts Association of School Committees Outstanding School Partner Award recipient, which we're very pleased about. I know Ms. Spinelli's done a lot of work on that, and I, I know she's going to have a lot of exciting things to talk about with that. Uh, we are going to begin our discussion about the school calendar for the upcoming school year, 2016-2017. And then Mr. Yukna and Ms. Spinelli are going to uh, lead us in a preliminary discussion of the proposed FY17 school budget. Then we'll get an FY16 budget update. We're going to accept a donation. We'll take up other matters. And the committee, for the first time in a couple weeks, is not going into executive session tonight. We'll conclude with other matters. So do we have any uh, visitors who want to be recognized before we start? Seeing none, we have the minutes of uh, December 7th, regular meeting minutes. I know Janet passed out just an updated verb this update. This is updated. Okay, so we disregard the others. Yeah. I, I had actually just asked Janet if she could change um, attended two wonderful theater production to mention because I actually only attended one of them. So wanted to be accurate. Very good. Anybody have any changes they want to make? None after no. what Tina and Beverly mentioned. I just had uh, one <clears throat> if I can and uh, Janet it's my fault for not being real clear but at the very end in our other matters we were thanking a lot of people because I was in the Thanksgiving spirit still and uh, <laughs> and I thanked yes I was you're right and I uh, I thanked Mike from Foxboro Cable Access. I actually meant Mike Everson, who is often behind the scenes. But we'll thank Mr. Weber as well as Mr. Everson. Mm -hmm. And tonight, we'll thank Frank, who's back there working the cameras for us. So if we can just say Mr. Everson and Mr. Weber, I'd appreciate yes. it. Minor minor change, but Mike's always there for us. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second. All those in favor? 4-0. Uh, Mrs. Weiss is unable to join us tonight, so we've got four members tonight. Okay, thanks everybody. Tonight's teaching and learning highlight, Ms. Spinelli. I am thrilled with tonight's teaching and learning, as I always am. I say that every time, so I don't think this one I have, I have not liked yet. Um, but I would like to invite Ms. Lai and her six students from grade eight math classes. They're from, I think, two different classes, so please come on up. Um, drag a chair with you, if you can. Uh, while they're getting prepared, uh, I'm, go I'm going to try to tie this to two things. Um, one is that this is an area I'm particularly interested in, flip learning. Because um, as you know, uh, well, you may remember a few years ago when, we, when this started coming into the forefront, I did a little workshop for high school teachers on flip learning when we first started. And I just thought it was something that had a lot of potential. And here we are three or four years later seeing it trickling into all other aspects of our educational system. And secondly, um, if you remember my goals from September, my superintendent's goals, one of them was to create a structure for instructional rounds so that different groups, flexible groups of administrators, coordinators, directors, and eventually we want to invite teachers in, can travel around the district and get to know what is it we're doing, what are some promising practices, and just see what life is like in some of the other schools that we tend to stay in one place. So um, we have been doing that for a couple of months. It's been eye-opening. I personally am in the flip learning group. So we visited Miss Lai's class. I visited with Darlene Reed and Dan Ambrosio, and we have two other high school people in our group as well who couldn't make that particular visit. And so we were interested to see how flipped learning is used in mathematics, particularly in eighth grade. And I have to say, I was so unbelievably impressed by the kids' comments when I asked them about it, just on that informal visit that I sort of said, you, you are the next teaching and learning highlight. So the kids are confident and have a lot to say. Miss Lai, it wouldn't have been her favorite thing to do is to come tonight. She's one of the teachers who doesn't like to talk about herself a lot, but sometimes we but make She's talking those, about the students. Sometimes so we make those people do point. it. So uh, she can introduce the students, and we have, I believe, a quick video, and then invite the students to talk to us personally. Very exciting. Go right ahead. Um, so this is Olivia, Antonia, Grace, Anya, Ryan, and Sam. All in eighth grade math. All right. So we're ready for the video first. 
First, the teacher makes a video that delivers the content they'd usually teach in class. Then they share it online with students who can watch it before the next lesson. This leaves the teacher free to spend class time leading activities that help students apply the knowledge. Students can rewind and rewatch a video as many times as they like and come back to class with questions to the teacher. So keeping up with the class is no longer an issue. Students can have to access restart the video it and maybe with a little bit higher volume. Devices, giving them the ability to maybe learn. Maybe start and get the volume up a little bit for us. Sorry, it's just this sort of, a, it's just not so long of a video, so you don't want to miss some of the information in the beginning about what flip learning is, because this is a new learning experience for some people at home. Sam, will that microphone reach over any closer, or is it uh, tight? Um, that a boy. Thank you. Hopefully that doesn't mess anything First, the teacher makes a video that delivers the content they usually teach in class. Then they share it online with students who can watch it before the next lesson. This leaves the teacher free to spend class time leading activities that help students apply the knowledge. Students can rewind and rewatch a video as many times as they like and come back to class with questions for the teacher. So keeping up with the class is no longer an issue. Students can access the video at any time using mobile devices, giving them the ability to learn more independently. Instead of sitting and listening, students can spend class time applying knowledge in more practical ways. And teachers are free to spend their time working with students and giving them individual support and attention. When you go home, you watch a video about a new lesson or new topic, you learn it that night, and then the next day you practice it with your teachers to get better at it. And I really like this because in the past years, I've always felt when I didn't understand something, I could never rewind a teacher like you can rewind a video. But when you watch these for homework, if you don't understand something, you just rewind it, play it back until you understand it. Then the next day, you practice it until you're really good at it. If you ever want to study for a test, sometimes the teacher won't remember everything that they've taught you. They might leave out even like the smallest details, but you can go back in the videos, watch them, look back at all your notes. That will really help, and that is a key way of studying. We already have most of the information, at least the background knowledge of it learned. When we go into class, we can spend the class time on asking her questions instead of having to learn it again. So if you're confused on something with a certain topic, you can just rewatch that part of the video. And if you rewatch that part of the video, you'll probably understand it more. And it's almost having like a teacher at home with you. So it's very helpful. I find it very helpful that a lot of the questions she asks us, like what's the formula, what does this mean? We already have it in our notes, so we can just go back to it and we have the answer for her. We know the exact definition, it's not like a guessing game. When we work in groups, it's really helpful to all have retained the same information for the night before. The videos enhance what we learn in class and the homework enhances the videos. I think book learning definitely helps me with studying for my own tests and also any questions that I may have because the videos that we watch answer our questions for us usually and if not, we can go back to specific areas of the uh, video and also we're signing for a test we can just watch the video and look at our notes that we took the night before it just gives you the extra push you need to do better on tests and quizzes i like flip learning a lot because we don't have to always listen to the teacher talking that's what we do at home when we learn so during class we often work on some problems and we can discuss with our peers and it's nice so if you're ever stuck or confused you can always ask them for help I think it's it's more helpful. It definitely teaches us more than seventh grade. Like I learned, I learned a lot more this year than I did last year. Flip learning, uh, flip learning is definitely something I think all teachers should look into. Awesome video. I'm just gonna have the video. Yes.
thanks to Mr. Rojo and to Ms. Lai for, for our instructional video. So maybe you could start by telling us from your viewpoint to thinking about the audience at home as pretty much lay people who aren't teachers. What, in your view, is flipped learning? And so educate us, edu educate us a little bit about what you do and why it counts as flipped learning, and then we'll go from there. So there are a lot of different models for flip learning, and the one that we use is that students will watch short kind of video lectures of the content at home. The videos tend to be about 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, and they take notes on them, and then answer anywhere from two to five questions of really basic questions of did you understand the video? So that's a quick assessment, and that's usually where we start the next day in class. So if they didn't understand those questions, and I know where to start at the very beginning, as opposed to a little bit um, further on in the lesson. And then in class, we have time to do more problems. I have time to um, ask the more, uh, the more, the deeper questions, um, do some more practice, do more projects, do discussion, and they can work with each other and kind of go through the learning process together, as opposed to at home, where they might struggle more. So. For me, it's helped in terms of there's less struggle at home with math homework because they're watching a video, they're taking notes, they have a specific structure to taking notes, so they kind of know what to do and they oh. hopefully do it. And so they have a structure and they also have a reference. And one of the things they're asked to do, though, we don't do it very often, is if they have a question on the video, to write it down so then the next day, if they don't understand something, I can clarify that, but then move on from that. Because I don't need to spend time having them take notes. I, um, and each kid takes a different amount of time taking notes, so the pace of the class slows down. So if they all have the basic structure of all the notes, I just add to them in the day, um, in the class time. Um, they collaborate more. I hear more teacher talk, or math talk, I should say, mm -hmm. because they have more time to discuss problems. And for me, the selfish reason is I get to know them better as math students because I wouldn't necessarily see all their misconceptions. They don't tend to ask questions a lot in eighth grade when they don't know it. But as I walk around and I listen to their groups and I ask them questions, they're more likely to, or I'm more likely to like catch things and ask them questions and see where they're stuck. So that's how we use it in eighth grade. Why don't we get, take some questions about the model first before the, the kids comment on the benefits? Questions on the model? I know most, most of your parents. Okay, so so the quick explanation in, in, that uh, that Noah just gave is sometimes it's video, mm -hmm. sometimes it's written text, sometimes it's going to a site. To, usually it's just a video. Usually um, it's a video, but in other classes, say at the high school, it could be. It, it, how the, we call it the front-loaded content. So whatever it is that you're, uh, the content that you're pushing into kids <coughs> the night before at while they're at home. So why it's called the flip is because in our traditional education system, you're in class and you're more or less, while well, we were anyway, passively listening to the teacher imparting knowledge, explaining processes, how to do things, um, listening to explanations of things and not participating a lot, as we were in school, and then when you go home and you actually start working with the skill or the content and you get confused by it, because learning is not usually quite that smooth, then there's nobody there to help you through where you, where you hit a glitch or you hit a confusion or you have a misunderstanding of something. And then you go back to class and class moves on with more imparting of information and you still didn't catch up from what you didn't understand before. So the reason this is called the flip is because it's 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 a flip. So at home, you're you're getting more or less absorbing the information that the teacher would have done in class, and making sure you have a basic understanding of it. Not everybody has to understand it perfectly. So that when you get to class, you're using your class time for the meatier things, to apply the knowledge, to work with the problems, to talk to others, to work in teams, to apply your knowledge, correct your misperceptions, and move on. So that's why it's, it's the flip of what happens and when, what happens at home and what happens in school. Is that fair enough? Yes. All right. So. There can be mixed feelings about the flip from students who have been experiencing it. So what are your feelings about it other than, you know, we heard stuff on the video and you had some of my favorite quotes of the year so far. So what else do you want to tell us about it? Who was not on the video? Because we had some kids on the video that aren't here and we have some, some kids who are, and vice versa. I guess I'll start. Um, 
One of the things that I like about flipped learning is that um, the mo um, I think Ms. Sly said this in the beginning of the year, but the most trouble you have on homework is on the actual problems. So instead of um, learning the lesson in class and having to do the problems for homework, if you don't understand something that was taught to you in class, um, you can just go back in the video and um, rewatch it as, as many times as you'd like. And um, also for some of the kids that um, like need more examples, there's examples in the video um, and also definitions and um, other things like that. So I think it's really helpful for all students. Terrific. I agree with Grace. I think it's also very helpful and um, and there's like a lot of vocab and examples that you can go back to and also um, a lot of the examples in the video are worded the same way as the problems in the book so that helps if you don't understand the wording in a problem in the book you can look at back at the video and it will explain the like wording more and um, it's also very helpful for studying because we take a video on most of the lessons, and we can always look back and um, do that for when we're taking the test, when we're, uh, when we're studying for the mm. test. And look back it's a great resource for that. Yeah, uh, I agree with Anya. One of the things I have most trouble on is studying, so the flip classroom can give an extra tool to help study, because when you have uh, a notebook filled with all the lessons that you've learned in the past chapter, that gives you a tool to dig through uh, all the resources that you've learned over the past chapter to go back on the test. So if you don't know one concept, you can go back into your video notes and study at your house, and it helps you get kind of a leg up on the test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Miss Lai. Is this your first year with the flip classroom? Um, no, this is my th kind of my third year. Okay. I tried it two years ago for a couple months, and it completely failed. The kids didn't like it. I tried it probably in uh, March or April and they complained about it and they didn't like it so I was like oh maybe I shouldn't do this and then I tried it again last year um, and I started started at the beginning of the year so that worked much better because that was how they were introduced to it and um, I gave a mid-year survey and one of the things questions was you know what's one thing that you found helpful this year and I would say about 75 percent of the students reference the video notes and of those students about 80 percent said it was a positive experience some de definitely said no this is not working for me um, but about 80 percent 80 85 percent said it was a positive experience and I was telling Miss Finelli about a student in the class this was probably in April and she and I said oh because we follow the videos we find I don't create them they're actually um, another teacher in a different district has the same program so a lot of our videos come from her um, and she hadn't gotten to that point, and we had started to surpass her. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, we're gonna wait, or we have a different video, that's why we can't have this woman. And the student said, but what did you do last year, like when you got to this <laughs> chapter and this lesson? I said, well, we didn't do this last year. She's like, well, then what did you do? <laughs> you did normally, you know, like the teacher taught you the lesson or what have you, and she's like, oh, I wouldn't like that. Like, that's what you've been doing for seven years, you know, so by April they kind of understand it becomes part of you know part of their everyday so was the key for you with this group starting at the beginning of the year with it I think starting at the beginning of the year and then adding a lot more structure it was a little less structured when I first started than yeah. just being very specific in what I wanted and then last year I had some um, structure in how I wanted the video notes I thought they could do it a more easily than without explicit instruction but this year I was like okay we're gonna go through this this is exactly how I want it so I think that has helped them figure out what mm. has worked what, better for what me. What like is the, the structure I, of the video notes? Um, well, it's very similar to the structure of the video itself. Mm -hmm. And I tell them exactly you know, which parts of the video they need to include in their notes and which parts um, are optional. They have to watch, but, but you don't have to take notes on. Um, and then use the notes to help them with the mm. like three to four problems that are the basic problems of that lesson. Because if you can't get those problems, then you definitely are not going to understand the rest of the lesson. So that's when we start in the day, the morning, we check those off and then most days they're like, oh yeah, I got it. Other days, they're like, I didn't understand how this happened and that's kind of where our jumping off point is again. Mm. So as a teacher, when you're having the concept introduced 
at night to the students through any of these different means, typically videos, and then they come in the next day. Do you find that as a teacher to be um, either a more enjoyable process to then work with them through the, the concept development with them or a more beneficial, or what, what are your thoughts? What are your reactions from an education standpoint? I definitely think it's more beneficial to the students because you know, I tell them a lot, you're learning the process at home, but then I explain to you where the process comes from or why we do this or where this can be applied. So I don't need to tell you how to find slope, but now like where are we going to use slope or where are we going to use the constant rate of change. So I don't need you to take notes on that. I just need you to understand like how to do it, and then I can tell you why it happens so that you can understand the concept better. Um, I think it's... I, you know, there's certain topics that I don't have them introduced with a video because I want them to discover them. I don't want them to know what the process is. So, you know, when we're discovering the Pythagorean theorem, I don't have them watch a video. If we're discovering specific exponent laws, like I don't want them to watch um, a video. I want them to explore it first in class. So there's some things that mm -hmm. I don't have them first. I don't want the like aha moment to go away. <laughs> That's a good note though because yeah. it uh, whether you're whatever subject you teach right. there are times when flip learning makes sense and there are right. times when it doesn't and you should choose accordingly. So okay. how any particular concept or skill is introduced should be based on that concept or skill and how the teacher feels it's best introduced. So it's not I don't want people to get the impression that this is now how everything's going to go. It's right. when it's appropriate and in what subject and what grade and um, and sometimes it isn't. Right. It's quite a popular movement, though, across the industry, so I'm really glad that we're uh, taking advantage of it now. It's something I see all across the country in K-12 and higher ed, of course, and, you know, if you read anything about the industry, it's, it is a common direction, so I'm really pleased that we're exploring it, and as you've said, you know, it, it allows you to uh, expand the extensions that you can have in the learning and the lesson. It, uh, it really takes advantage of technology. Now the technology is available in the home. Uh, for so many of our students, which before it was there, we really couldn't have done this. But now, we, we really think it's going to help dramatically impact education. So I'm, I'm very pleased to hear here in our own town and schools that you're finding it the same. And it sounds like it's taken you an iteration or two, right. which is absolutely all right. right. But the fact that it's you're always, doing it. Yeah, it's always changing. Like, you know, there are things in my mind right now that I'm like, okay, I'm going to change this again. So it's always evolving. And, you know, it depends on the students. You know, some classes, it works better than other classes and some classes you know what it's given me at least sorry no <laughs> um, is that and they didn't discuss this but they're they do a lot of talking now more in class than they used to because I was you know I kind of am their facilitator I'm not the like mm. instructor you right know? so they can talk more and I think they get more out of it when they practice more and discuss with each other and they can you know feed off each other's like Oh, I get this. Oh, I get this, and together we get it all. <laughs> yeah. And what, what do you guys think? Do you agree with that? That you know, the talking amongst yourselves during the class time is helpful to each other. Um, actually, it does a lot because, like, without this, it would be like it slows down the class. One person has one question, and then we all have to listen to everything that they have uh -huh. to say, and we have to all learn it again. But like with this, it just we can we can help each other now. Mm -hmm. like, Everyone has to only one person has to get a question and help out. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Going off what um, what Olivia said, um, I think it's really helpful because in the problems in class, um, we do it as a table. Some groups work together and um, go through the problems as a um, group. So if you um, don't understand something and um, you'd rather ask a classmate than a teacher, mm -hmm. um, one of your classmates at, um, in your group can explain it to you if you didn't understand the video. So I think it's helpful that way. Ms. Juden. Yeah, you, you've all said your ideas about this tool for studying really well, either on the video or here tonight. And I think you and your family should be proud. The one thing I, I wonder about all of you, and you can shout this out if you want, um, is, if you will, evangelizing or telling other students, like, uh, you should try this, you know, or if they haven't. Because you mentioned you like to study a different way, right? And everybody's different. But have you ever advertised this to other friends outside of the class about how you can use this as a tool, even on the bus on the way to school, like, check this out, as opposed to a cat being afraid of a cucumber in a YouTube video or something like that, right? Do, do you do that with your other other peers? Because that's very powerful to, to have other students trust your opinion on this. You ever try that? 
telling other students? You're nodding your head. Um, I have some friends from surrounding towns who um, their programs are a little different in math and other classes, and they're learning some different things. But they say they sit through classes and how boring their classes are. <laughs> Then I explain to what um, to them what we do about um, watching a video, and then doing more problems in class, and how pretty much every video that we watch at night they kind of build off the last in every chapter, and so they it seems weird to them, but it seems kind of more normal to us now that we've been doing it for a couple months. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought it was a little strange when we started, when she was saying watch videos at home every night. and I When your parents are saying the opposite, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the right video. You're watching the right video. And so. I thought, oh, I'm not going to like this. But then once we started and I saw more benefits from it and telling my friends about it, and I showed some of my friends from other towns my notebook when they were over my house, and they thought that it was a really cool idea, and they wished that they could have this in this town. Great. Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So who would like to still comment based on our questions that we haven't heard from? What else do you think we should know about it? Do you think there's, do you see, I'm going to tell you something I noticed, and you tell me if you think it's true. So I visited a couple classrooms now doing the flip. I thought you, eighth grade math students, were much more comfortable with this method of learning than the high school kids I've seen so far. And so I am i don't know if because they had the other style so long, it's too different, or they had it so long. I don't know, but you, you were not only more comfortable with it, but you were more articulate and clearly explained to me how it was for you and how it affected your learning. I was completely blown away with how aware you were of how it impacted your learning and what it did for you. So that was impressive. Are you aware of that yourself, or has it just become the way you learn so you don't think it's a big deal? I'm kind of curious as to your level of insight and whether you know it or not. I'll start with you, Sam. Well, I, I think it's, it's, uh, well, it's kind of just the way we, we learn since uh, Ryan was saying this, uh, how it's getting to seem more normal since we're doing it for a few months now, since December we started September, so it's about four months now that we've been doing this. And I think at the end of last year, we started to do it a, a little bit, and it didn't work as much. We watched like two videos and tried to take notes on it, mm -hmm. and those d it didn't work out well because the whole entire year we would be doing it the traditional way, so to speak, where uh, Mrs. Ryan was teaching us in the classroom, and then we would go home and do the book work at night and come back in any questions ca the, the traditional sort of way. But now that we've been doing it like with the flip classroom the for four months now the whole entire year uh, I think that's made it more of a normal to us and it becomes more I guess I, I don't know the word for it but I, I guess it's more common knowledge and just Oh, I don't know the word for it. It's uh, natural. natural. <laughs> <laughs> How did I not know? That? Yeah, okay. No, I knew what you were getting at, though. It becomes I know what more natural for yeah. you to respond in such a way. That so it's almost like the more you experience it, the better you get at what the expectation is for you and what you're going to be asked to do the next day in class. That's what I saw with your group. Like it, you, you, you got it. You understood it, and you were very aware of it. So what, what else? What else? Anybody um, wants to? Like what Sam was saying, it's become more like a routine for us doing it um, usually at least three times a week watching videos and um, having that structure and make, having everyone take in the same information at the same time and making sure we all understand it during the day because before we would have to spend so much time going over homework because maybe one kid mm. wouldn't understand a certain thing and other kids would, so it was kind of a waste of time for other people. But now in our small groups when we talk, and if someone misses something in the video, you can ask who's, whoever sits with you while we're doing our work. And I enjoy doing more, um, since sometimes questions and applying it is harder for students. I feel like having a teacher there to help you with that instead of doing that at home by yourself mm -hmm. is a lot more helpful. 
You guys feel that? Like good use of class time? Yeah, I agree with that because um, like uh, Ryan said, um, sometimes the problems that you do, um, that usually you do at home, um, that we're now doing in the classroom are what stump kids a lot. So um, when you're doing them in the classroom instead of at home, then you can always ask the teacher then if you need extra help. And also going off of that, um, when you watch the videos, um, you kind of go at your own pace. So if you don't understand something, um, you can just rewind the video and do it as much as you like. I love visiting your class. Anything else? <laughs> um, well, I felt like last year, I know I'm not the only student, but I know like sometimes we would go kind of fast in class. So I, would, I wouldn't really understand one topic that we were learning about, but I would never raise my hand because I, I never want to be that one person who didn't really understand it. Um. So like what Grace was saying about like, you can pace yourself. If you don't understand, you can just stop, take a minute, go back, rewatch it, and look at your notes. And then if you still have trouble, that's what the class time is for, asking questions and then improving on what you've already learned. That's a great point to end on because now everybody is in class asking questions and sharing information and their thoughts about mathematical thoughts. So if you're not clear on anything, neither is probably anybody else. So you don't stand out as that, that kid wants to come back the next day and say, I don't understand any of the homework. So that's another benefit too. Well, and as I said, this is gonna be, I think, a more and more popular way of teaching because now the teacher's role changes and she goes from just being the font of all knowledge to now she can work with you guys as you've gotten introduced to the concepts the night before, right? So I wanna thank uh, you all and your classmates for helping us figure this out here in Foxboro. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming tonight. And I wanna thank Miss Lai for, uh, for her work and iterating. I have a feeling one of the things I took out of this, Noah, you know, I'm familiar with the concept, but it sounds like the structure you give them that, that you send them off to the videos with is important for them to know what you want them to get out of it. So I think that sounds like one of the, the, the key parts of the secret sauce. Yeah, the expectations. Yeah. Right. Thank you, you guys. Thank Great you. job. Thank, awesome. you. Thank you very much. You. Your, your proud principal, Mrs. Abrams, is here and some proud parents, Mrs. Morrison yeah. and the McGowan. So awesome job. You just educated a lot of people, including me. Terrific. Amy, do we have other flipped classrooms to your knowledge? And yes. Do you, do you have a sense of how many? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Well, that's my group. <laughs> my group is going around looking at them. I, would, I can't quantify it because we have several teachers who are trying it when it's appropriate. Um, a lot of, there aren't a lot that are doing as regularly as Ms. Lai, perhaps, but we visited a few classrooms and that's what we're studying throughout this year. So I don't, we haven't quantified it yet. But we have, um, we have World Language Department at the high school that's doing it. We have a lot of people in the science department. Um, we have some other music. Um, you sa said science and music, and that's a perfect segue to what I wanted to chime in. Uh, one of our other teaching and learning highlights from maybe three years ago mm -hmm. or four years ago was Ms. Tatro and Ms. McDonough doing their world famous video, Call Me Density, out. and they have a new one out. Would you like to? No, you can I, I just uh, saw it's, it. It's Adele's Hello. Uh, hello. Hello velocity. from the science lab on velocity. So uh, it, it's, yeah, I, we get I recommend to see that sometime? It, you can go on YouTube. From what I understand, Sam tells me she's got over They're a thousand views now. So Adele is, has a new song out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's rivaling Adele. Said it's trying phenomenal. not to but smile. But our teachers do so many wonderful things <laughs> they do. for our students to make. The and some of the creative. flip I want to say is not yeah. all video. Yeah. So, right. and you know, the, the joke I always tell is it's not really a joke, but in English class. The traditional English class is more like a flip than we would know because typically if you're doing literature, you read the chapter at home, whether you're doing Shakespeare or something else, and you come prepared to class to either write about it or talk about it or to be in um, Socratic groups. So the, the way you do English mm -hmm. is actually a flip model, and that would be the only kind of traditional class model that is more like a flip. So we're seeing lots of different things, and that's exactly what my group is trying to learn is where are, where are kids experiencing flip learning? Um, we're trying not to call it the flip classroom because it's flip learning. Sometimes a teacher will say this week um, it's appropriate for this lesson to prepare for the next day, and then.